ready to get in the word today. We're going to be looking at fear again. You know, last the, all week we've been talking about fear. It started out on Monday with me and my husband addressing the subject of fear. And one of the things that I've been commissioned to do is slow down. And so I'm going to slow down today, but y'all better keep up because there's a lot that comes up out of my heart when I'm talking. And, uh, you know, at this season of my life, I don't want to forget anything. And so when it comes, I want to spit it out. And so sometimes things come to my mind all at the same time, and that makes me speed up. So I'm going to pull myself in, pull my reins back so that I can uh, share what I need to say today. And so I hope you all will stay with me to the end. If you have not registered for Women in Worship, it is tomorrow, kicks off at 7 a.m. We're gonna be out here doing what we do. It's gonna be myself, Cheryl McMurtry, Anissa Pers Perkins, uh, Carmen McKinney. We're gonna be praying. We're gonna be touching heaven and changing earth. So I hope that you all are ready for that. But you know, I grew up without my mom and my, my father. And I suffered a few traumatic experiences as a young girl. We've been talking about fear. And so I felt like this was something that I needed to share. You know, those experiences that I had shaped how I showed up in the world. And having friends who were assertive and outgoing, I always tagged along and I would smile, but I would be hiding my feelings of inferiority and insecurity. And as I got older, and I know what I'm talking about is not just you know, for women. Men go through the same thing. They may not show it like we show it, but men go through the same thing. But as I got older, although I was forced to face the world, I had to also face the fact that I had these abandonment issues that had to be dealt with. And not having the parents in my life, you know, my mom was there, but she didn't raise me. I was raised by my grandmother. And so not having my parents there caused, you know, caused a lack of self-esteem. I started thinking in a worthless way about myself. I had a low self image and a constant feeling of being rejected. You know, and all of these things, as I shared early on this week, they're all an offspring of the spirit of fear. And so the spirit of fear is, is something else. It'll have you forever desiring to be seen while at the same time make you despise what you see in yourself. And I wanted to be regarded, but I didn't wanna see anything of worth in myself, I couldn't. And I, it wasn't until I got exposed to the word of God, and I'm talking about as early as age 10 and 11, it wasn't until I got exposed to the word of God and I realized how much God loved me that I began to realize the spirit of fear where it was and I was taught to arrest it in my life. And it was through the word of God that I came to know, and I still know today, that I'm worthy of being seen, but not only as I am in Christ, uh, but, but not, let me say this, only as I am in Christ, I'm worthy to be seen, not in and of myself, but as I am in Christ. And so fear was always talking to me, controlling where I went and what I did. And fear was trying to convince me that I was too afraid and, and, and many times too flawed. And so that I didn't measure up to anybody, God or man. And religion started doing a number on me, as I've shared with you all in the past. But thank God for the word of faith and people who love me and people who walked with me and they, they put truth in me. And it was through me getting myself under the word, I began to see what Christ had done for me, that he qualified me and he positioned me so that I could do whatever God had put in my heart and I could be whatever God had called me to be that I could, I could be a success in every facet of my life. And regardless to my beginning or my present, I knew that if I kept my eyes on him and even still do today, that God could move me into a place of victory and success. And my feelings and my failures didn't have a voice in my life. And so like me, your past doesn't get to determine where you go or whether or not you qualify for who God called you to be. You know, it's already been predetermined by God. He's the one who determines our value and our worth. And he did it long before we were ever born. You can show up in any room at any time because you see yourself through God's eyes and not your own. And even though your circumstances might change from day to day, your life, when it's grounded in the word of God, your life is strong and you can show up in the world fearless. You know, as a believer, 
the more we become conscious of our walk with God, it's important that we understand what God has in his mind for each and every one of us. We got to see ourselves as God sees us in order to advance in a way that's going to bring our entire life forward. You know, I talk about you know, bringing your life forward because my, my girlfriend, Dana World Patterson, always talked about when you show up in the world, all of you is supposed to show up. You know, and God's desire also is that no part of who you are is left in the dust, that every inch of you, your spirit, your soul and your body finds itself living in the fullness of God and in the revelation of who you have been made to be. And that's fearless and flawless, you know, thinking about it. You think about your flawlessness. It's not flawless from the outside, but it's flawless on the inside. When you got born again, your recreated spirit is flawless. And so, yes, there are challenges that you may have with your thought life. And yes, there may be things that you do with your physical body that may not line up with the word of God, but it does not change the reality that in your inner man, you are blameless. And so God is saying, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but I gave you a spirit of power, love, and a self-disciplined mind. And I created your human spirit to be flawless. And so it's important that you understand that God has given you the tools that are necessary to live a fearless life. Will fear still show up? Yes, fear will still show up. But we need a revelation from the word of God of who God says that we are. And he sh when he shows us who we are, we have to be willing to never see ourselves any other way. You know, and yes, there will be thoughts. We talked about the bird flying over your head yesterday. Yes, there'll be thoughts that will come to you. But you have to make a commitment to yourself that every thought that comes into my life that's there to undermine who I am, to make me afraid, I'm going to cast those thoughts down and I'm going to stay committed to who God says I am. And so knowledge of the word is what's going to bring us up and it's what's going to bring us out. So we need to tap into the wisdom of God to advance and to increase in our lives. You know, as I think about God's word, I think about the fact that we have access to, to, to everything that we need to grow. There is nothing that I could ever face in life or that you or, or, or anyone else that names the name of Christ could ever face in life that God didn't already equip you with the tools to overcome it. When you take the time to med on the, meditate on the word of God, that is where the power comes into operation in your life. The word will powerfully change whatever's going on in your life. And knowledge is all around us. We, there's a lot of knowledge around us. The answer is all around us. But until we get hungry enough and desire to grow enough to pull what we need out of the word of God, we're going to be stuck in our fears. And so you got to use the word. That's my point in this. And I know that we've kind of harped on that over and over again, you know, but to see you abounding in everything that you desire to do, you got to do it God's way because he wants your life to abound and he wants you to experience everything that the kingdom of God has to offer. And I mean everything. And this is important to know because if you struggle to believe that God's will is your success, that you're supposed to have a victorious life, that you're supposed to be living the blessed life, you're going to live defeated because you don't understand. Remember, faith begins where the will of God is known. And if you don't, if you don't understand it and, and mentally identify with the fact that God wants you to be a success, then when every form of defeat or discouragement, all of these things show up in your life, then you're not going to fight it. You're going to lay down. You're going to acquiesce to it. You're going to lay down and, and, and just walk in the status quo of life versus walking in the victory that's been promised to you. So you've got to learn what God said about you because that's your truth. Everybody is looking for truth. You know, I, I sometimes I get concerned when we tell me, what's your truth? What's your, my truth is God's truth. The Bible says truth in Ephesians. The Bible says the truth is found in Jesus. So you have to fill your mind and your heart with God's truth, not just your truth. Yes, it's true that you experience the things that you experience, but that's not what I'm living on. That's not what's going to sustain my life. What's going to sustain my life is the truth that's found in Jesus Christ. And so we have to fill our heart and our mind 
with the truth, which is the word of God. And we've got to do it every day. You know, when we were uh, youth pastors, we had this uh, gathering call for young men called the Covenant Achievers. And they had this motto for young men. And they would say, we're going to love God. We're going to obey our parents. We're going to be productive citizens in society and blah, 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 blah. But they would say, how often are you going to do it? And they would stump their feet and they would say every day, every day, every day. And so the question to you is how often are you going to fill your mind with the word of God so that you can live a fearless life? You got to do it every day, every day, every day, because remember, maintenance is cheaper than repair. What you don't want to do is you don't want to wait until something hits your life and then now you got to play catch up to try to get ahead of it. No. What do we do? We keep our mind. We keep our hearts. We keep our lives inundated with God's truth, with God's word. So that when things hit our lives, what are we doing? Our knee jerk is, well, the word of God said, well, God said, the word said, go and doing what Jesus said. In Ephesians chapter five, the word tells us to imitate God as dear children. You think about what Jesus did when he was on the mountain. The Bible says that he was led uh, uh, by the spirit of God into the wilderness. Why? To be tempted of the devil. And every time he was tempted, what did he say? It's written. It's written. It's written. And that's what you've got to say about everything that comes your way every single day, because everything happens in the run of a day. God moves in the run of a day. Situations happen in the run of a day. Satan moves in the run of a day. And he works overtime to steal what's been planted in your heart and to steal what God has given you. So you have to be strategic. You have to guard and protect your heart because your, your heart is the garden that carries the truth. Your heart is the garden that carries the promises of greatness. And so when we, we look at the word of God, the word shows us that God wants you to live a blessed life. And he never uses, never says anything about fear because he doesn't even want you thinking about fear. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23, when he said, beloved, I wish above everything that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And then in John uh, 3, uh, 3 and 2, well, that's John 3 and 2, but then in, in 1 Thessalonians, he said, I want the very God of peace to sanctify you wholly that your whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless. That's God's will. He didn't say anything about fear in there. He didn't say, and fight fear. He didn't say anything about fear. Why? Because he doesn't even want fear in your mind. He doesn't want fear in your psyche. What does he want you to do? He wants you to recognize that power and love and soundness of mind is what you are to have. And so all he wants you to think about is that I want your spirit, soul, and body to be preserved blameless. All he wants you to think about is that I want you above everything else, above anything else. He said, I wish this above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so both of those passages, essentially, God is saying the same thing. He's saying, I want all of you to increase. I don't want your body cute, your body handsome, but your mind jacked up. I don't want your spirit to be strong, but you to be an emotional wreck. And honestly, it's not possible. If your spirit is strong, you can't be spiritually strong and then be an emotional wreck at the same time. No, every part of you, remember, every part of you is on this journey. And so going back to what Paul said when he said it, he's speaking boldly. He's declaring, he's not commanding. He's telling you, this is what I'm looking for. I want your life to be in place. I want everything about you to be where it's supposed to be. Why? So that you can recognize who you are and who God has made you to be. That's being whole. You're a whole person, even if you've got issues in your life. You know, God created you with nothing missing and nothing broken. That's how you were created and that's how God wants you to be. When you go back and you look at the book of Genesis in our church, we're often talking about the law of first mention. And in the law of first mention, you know, I shared it with you all that the first time God makes mention of something, that proves that that's his desire for humanity. And so the law of first mention, we see that he gave you dominion. He gave you authority. Why? Because he wants you to prosper, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish. There's no fear in that. There's no poverty in that. It's just everything good. And so God wants you to see and live a life that openly acknowledges that you know who you've been made to be. You're not to be hidden. You're not, you're to be out in the open for the world to see. Why? So that God can show that you're his special possession. 
that you're his trophy, if you will. Somebody that he's given not only beauty, but power, dominion, and authority. See, as believers who God, we have everything that we need to live a successful life. And who God made us to be is who we can be without fear, without concern. And so he wants all of you out in the open, all of you walking in the blessing, all of you glowing in his presence and in his peace. And you got to identify with that. You've got to embrace what he's spoken concerning you. And don't reject it. Don't resist it. You know, I was talking to a, a friend of mine who came by yesterday and, you know, she was talking about how when depression comes in her life that she'll eat the wrong thing, you know, and then she gets upset with herself for eating it and then go and eat something else wrong. It's like, no, 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 no. You can't undermine your success. And a lot of times we do that. We, we live in fear and we live in this constant state of what if and what like we don't have, like God has not given us everything that we need. But I want you all to know today that right now, even if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see on the inside of you, you have the potential, you have the power, you have the ability to change it. This is not natural. This is not a natural walk that we're living. We're living a supernatural life and we have access to supernatural power. And so God is revealing who he is and who we really are to ourselves. And so too many times we're putting the mirror in everybody else's face. We're fixing everybody else's hair, making sure that they're straight. But it's time for you to recognize what God has done in your life, that every part of your life is to be brought forward. You're a winner too. You're victorious too. You're the bomb too. You're, you, you got it all together too, just like everybody else. You have areas to work on? Yes. Are there things in your life that God wants to shift? Yes. No doubt about it. But you've got to see, you got to image yourself first. You've got to be able to see yourself victorious before you will walk in the victory. You got to see who God said that you are on the inside in order to, for it to be a reality on the outside. And so even in the face of loss, in the face of adversity, everything about you wins. I love that song that says, everything about me wins by Tasha Cobbs. Everything about me wins. And so I have to identify with being more than a conqueror, walking with my head up and my chest out. Light up the room when you walk in because that's who God has called you to be. Don't shrink back. Remember, God said, I don't get any pleasure when you shrink back. Don't let fear stop your shine. You know, whenever I go someplace with my husband, you know, he's tall. We can be in an airport sometimes and little kids will walk up to him. You know, in the early days of our marriage, little kids would walk up to him and, and ask him, who are you? Who do you play for? And even today, sometimes we'll get on a plane and people are asking him, you know, who he is and what team he plays on. If he plays football, you know, now he, when we were younger, you know, they would ask him what basketball team he's on. But now he's, you know, he's. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a nice size today. And today they're asking him about uh, being a football player, what team he played on. Why is that? Because the light of God shines on him. My husband walks in a room with confidence. He doesn't walk in with his head down. And so I'm learning from him to live in the favor of God that God has put in his life. And so same for you. Live in the favor that's on you. You can't help it. You've been favored. You've been blessed. You know, when you, you come in contact with people and they just got a swag about them, you know, and it's something that's admired. And people who have a real swag and it's not prideful, you admire those people. You want to get to know them. Well, that same thing is on you. You just got to learn how to cultivate it. And, you know, if you don't know that God is for you and that God is with you, you're going to live life without it. You'll be the one showing up in the room and trying to hide. You don't want to make a grand entrance. You know, you don't want to have, you don't want to wear something that's going to bring a lot of attention to you. That was me. You know, I, I always tried to tone it down because I didn't want people looking at me, but my husband would put on something and walk down the middle aisle. You know, he doesn't care because he's confident in who he is because God made him that way. And so he identifies with the fact that He's all of that in a bag of chips, if you will, because God made him that way. And so it's important for you all to understand that a mirror has been placed in front of you. That mirror causes you to go from glory to glory. It does not cause you to, to decline. God wants you to see yourself the way that he's made you. Don't despise it. Embrace it. Don't question it. Embrace it. Don't struggle with it. Embrace it. You are who you are. And you can't help who you are. God made you who you are. 
all that you are, God is saying, now let it come out. Because every time you hide it, there's a, a group of people. There are people who need what you have that go without it. And so God has declared something about you. And it's incumbent upon you and me to do all that we can to know what he's spoken and then to bring ourselves into alignment with it without fear. When God reveal, begins to reveal just how blessed you are, that in Christ you're fearless, that you're flawless, don't reject it. Don't say, but I did this or I did that. And if they knew what I did, then no, it doesn't matter. Don't let your mind pull you back when the truth comes to you. In Jesus Christ, you are flawless. You are flawless. Yes, you made mistakes. Yes, you may have issues that you're still dealing with because you're renewing your mind. But according to the word of God in Christ, you have everything that you need to be victorious. So you have to renew your mind to that truth and bring your life up to that level of truth. Stop squandering around in the dust. That's not, you weren't created for that. You were created to live on a higher level. And this is why it's important for us to study the word of God. You know, Kenneth Hagin used to say, this is why it's important for us to be New Testament taught instead of religiously brainwashed. Religion tells us that we have to be perfect on the outside to be used of God, to be the, the best that we can be. You know, you can't have any flaws. You can't have any problems. You can't make any mistakes. But that's not what God said. He said, I'll use you with those flaws. I'll bless you in spite of the mistakes that you made. And that's something that Satan has to deal with that he can do nothing about. God will use me. God has blessed me. God is using me. God has equipped me. God has empowered me. I'm anointed. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so when I choose to walk according to God's will and God's plan for my life, my past doesn't matter. And so bringing it up is futile. You know, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what I believe that God has done for me and through me through Jesus Christ. And you know, and I've been saying it's amazing grace. That's why we call it amazing grace. We qualify because of grace. I'm good enough because of grace. Let me slow down. I'm getting excited. But if you haven't been taught this, when you first hear it, you're going to reject it. It's going to trip you up. And you're going to think, oh, that's, that's pride. Because religion is going to put a chokehold around your neck. But you can believe, you can believe the good that God has done for you. You can believe the good about you because truth is in Jesus. You know, you have some people, they can believe a few good things about themselves. But they struggle with the idea that through grace, the past doesn't matter. You know, but God wants you to embrace every good thing that he's done for you in Christ Jesus. Swallow it all, honey. Take it all. Because there's, there's more besides that. There's greater blessing than this. God wants to use you. He wants to fill your spirit. He has filled your spirit with his divine presence. He wants to use your mind, your will, your emotions. He wants them strong and he wants them governed by his word. He wants to use your body. He wants your body functioning healthy and whole and operating just as the temple that he said it would be. He wants your finances in a full abundance supply. He wants your relationships blessed and abounding. He wants your family loving one another, working together, advancing his kingdom. He wants your business abounding in every good work. He wants your ministry impacting lives. That's God's will for you. But if you struggle with it, if fear, what fear will tell you is God don't want all of that for you. You, you don't have to have all of that. Why you got to have all of that? Why you got to have all of that? You don't need all of that. Just be content with what you have, with what God has given you. Yes, the word says, Paul said, I've learned that whatever state I'm in to be content. But that didn't mean that he wasn't striving for more. It didn't mean that he wasn't believing God to move out of where he was into a new space. No, it didn't mean that. What he was saying is where I am right now, I'm going to rock this. I'm going to work this where I am. So I'm going to be content where I am, but my vision is taking me to someplace else. I'm going to keep moving and striving to be the best. He wouldn't have said that God desires for you to go from glory to glory. He wouldn't have said that his desire is for you to prosper. Prosperity is progressive. You don't get pro prosperity one time. Okay, that's it. That's all the prosperity for you. No, prosperity is a continual, consistent work in your life that God through his grace is doing in your life. You know, but you have to believe it for yourself. The question is, is do you believe it? Is there any area of struggle in you? Where's your choking point? 
How far can you believe? How much can you believe for? What can God do in you? What can God through, do through you? And then the other flip of that is, what is fear stopping you from believing? Where does fear have a chokehold around your life? And so through the word of God, we can remove any choker that may exist in life. And by pulling, consistently pulling the treasures out of the word of God, we slowly but surely move the grip of any chokehold that we may have. And we will find ourselves embracing the fullness of the plan of God because it's already a done deal in the mind of God and in your spirit. Now all you have to do is bring your mind and your life into alignment with what God has already said and what God has already done. I hope I've said something that has helped you today, that has blessed you. I'm so looking forward to being with all of you all. Pray for me. I've had a lot of sleepless nights just trusting God for what we're going to be doing this weekend. I know it's going to be good. God bless you all. I love you. Be with me tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. right here. Women in Worship virtual. We're kicking it off at 7 a.m. And at 2 o'clock, it's going to be me at 7 a.m. Me, Carmen McKinney, Cheryl McMurtry and Anissa Perkins, the four of us leading women into prayer. If there's any man that wants to join us, you are more than welcome to join us. And then at two o'clock, me, Pamela Hines, Pastor Pamela Hines, and Lady Kimberly Locke from Unity, we're gonna be talking about why a woman needs to put her life first, spirit, soul, and body. And then uh, tomorrow night, me and Kim Burrell, Pastor Kim Burrell, she uh, did a beautiful worship set for us and we're gonna show her beautiful worship set and then we're gonna get into the word of God and we're gonna spend time praying. I hope that you all will join me because this weekend is gonna be power packed for you all. We've been praying for you, believing God for you. The prayer team has been praying for you. We're believing that your life will never be the same again. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.